What's up, YouTube? Today I got this 2012 Buick Verano. The customer's complaining of the check engine light coming on and off, and at times losing power, and a rough idle sitting at lights. And if you notice, the check engine light's not on right now, but that doesn't mean there's no code, so don't ever assume just because the light's not on, it doesn't have a code, y'all. You're going to have a pending code or a store code from the previous fault, unless somebody went in there and reset it, which always makes my life a lot more difficult. But in this case, they didn't. I've already scanned this, but I'm doing this video for y'all to show y'all how to go through this process. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so I can make videos like this to make your life easier. Now head on over to my previous videos. I'm going to start doing a tool giveaway for every 100 subscribers I gain. I'm going to randomly choose somebody out of the group to win the tool that I posted, and I'm going to be doing this every time I gain 100 subscribers or more. And the more subscribers I gain over the future, I want to get monetized. Let's get me monetized. The tool giveaways will become better and bigger and more often if we can get me up there, y'all. Let's do this. I work hard for y'all to make your life easier. So enough talk. Let's go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to go to the scanner side of this. You know, this is about the same scanner everybody's going to use, but whatever you get the picture. I'm just pulling the codes on this thing to show you what code we have. Stick that up there. While well, it's loading, okay, we're just going to go to trouble code so I can show you what code I'm dealing with here. P0014, camshaft position, time on over advanced, system performance bank 1. That is going to be uh, one of a few things. It's going to either be lower door to oil, a time and chain issue, a computer problem, or a bad solenoid thought that's, uh, that advances and retards the timing. And if the cylinder is not working, it's not going to be able to do that. So, and the most common thing on these Ecotex with this setup is the solenoids or low oil can do it too. I've seen other issues cause it as well, but most of the time it's these solenoids, and I'm going to show you how to test them because nine out of ten times this is what the problem is. If the oil is not low or dirty, always check that first. Uh, we're going back out of this. I'm just going to go to my multimeter on here because I got one built into my scan tool here. Now, if you just have a regular multimeter at home, just turn it to the ohm side. We're just going to go to graph and multimeter. We don't even need graphing. We'll just do digital. We're going to go to ohms. I've calibrated this thing already. Let's jump out of here. Let me give you all, now that might blind y'all the light in the screen. Just pull your oil cap off if you have this cover on top. Pop this cover off, there's no bolts on it. You just yank on it on each corner. All right. Now normally there'd be locking tabs on these, but obviously someone's been in there before messing with it, so which is fine. It makes my life easier. Usually if it does have a locking tab, take a little flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry it up. You don't have to pull the tab all the way out, just pull up on it to where it, it releases the lock on this, this uh, pinch tab right here. Just pull back on it, unplug it, pull back on it, unplug it. Alright, let me get some test leads here. Sorry, I got everything out. Alright, now the resistance specs on these are supposed to be 8 to 12 ohms. Anything outside of that or under that is considered bad. I'm just going to push these little pin connectors. You don't have to use these. If you got steady hands, you can just stick them down in there. Your test leads. It's a lot easier this way. Alright, now... Yeah, I got several different test leads. I just bought these not long ago. I'm gonna give them a try. Uh, we're gonna plug these bad boys into channel one here. You got your negative and your positive. Channel 1. Ah. 
black in the ground, red on, well, in my case, the yellow because this is a four channel scope. Try this again. Look, maybe, maybe we should calibrate it. Let's look at channel three and channel four together. Oh, you know what? I remember on this one, I'm a dork. I use a multimeter a lot too. Very rarely do I use the actual multimeter on this scanner, but because I'm using it to diagnose it, we're going to use a scanner too. I usually break out my power probe, which my new power probe actually has a continuity tester on it too. The old ones didn't, but my new one does. So yeah, you're gonna do continuity on channel three and four. We're gonna touch them together and hit okay. Oh, now we're good. Hey, we're working now. Sorry about that. I've had this scan tool for five years and but old age sucks. Get forgetful. So, both these solenoids should have 8 to 12 ohms. We'll test this exhaust side first. Doesn't matter how you put them in. So this one's right at 12, so it's uh, right there at the maximum value. And this one over here, the intake side, it's reading nothing, so it's completely dead. Y'all see I'm hooked up. All right, well, that pretty much confirms that, y'all. Just for shits and giggles, let's do it one more time on the other one to make sure nothing locked up. Sometimes things lock up on these scanners. Nope, it's going back to 12. Stick it in this other one again. Nothing. So this one's completely dead and this one's on its way out. So generally I sell both of them anyways because when one goes out, the other one's right behind it. So we're going to push both these solenoids, y'all. And if the customer decides to replace them, which they really don't have no choice if they want to get an emissions test as well. I don't know when their birthday's due here where I live. you got to have emissions every year when your birthday's due. So. I'm going to present this to them if they decide to replace them. I'll do a video on that as well, but until then, at least y'all know how to diagnose them. They're really easy to replace, and if they don't do them, all you have to do is take out this little piece of locking tab from the previous person that worked on it. It's all broke, but they'll click. You ain't got to have a locking tab on it. Just make sure they plug in and they, they click when you plug them in. It's two 10 millimeter bolts on each one. You just wiggle them and pull them out. It's very simple. But I'll show y'all how to do that if they replace them. And you can't put them in the wrong cylinders. I mean, you can, but you have a black and a gray one. They're two different solenoids. Even though they have the same resistance specs, it's going to be two different part numbers. So I'll get back at y'all if I do the job. Anyways, until then, y'all have a good day. Please subscribe. Check the like down below. Peace out. All right, y'all. I'm back with the Verano. The customer decided to go ahead and do the work because her mission is due next month. So I've already got my parts. I wanted to wait till I got the parts before I finished this video with y'all. I don't like making a bunch of videos. I don't like making one video. This one's gonna be two videos, but I'm gonna join them together so you see the diagnosis and the repair. So, anyways, let's get started. So, I'm gonna take this 10 millimeter bolts out of these solenoids. All right, let me go ahead and flip that the other way. Retrieve your bolts. You can get your hands down in there. If not grab a little pair of these grabbers here. 
And they give you new bolts with the solenoids too, so you don't have to reuse the old ones unless you just want to. It doesn't really matter. Wiggle them back and forth and pull up. Now you're going to drip a good bit of oil when you pull them out. Notice the gray goes on the intake side to the right here. Black goes on the exhaust side. Black back. Black back. Black back. Hello. Uh -oh. So before I install them, I'm going to test them. This is always a good practice. I don't care if it's new ones or our GM AC Delta ones or aftermarket. I'm using some Dura last ones here because the dealer was going to take all day to get them to me, and I've had pretty good luck with Dura last parts. So, and it doesn't really matter because whether they're OE or aftermarket, they gonna go bad again. They last maybe 50,000 miles. And if you run your oil low, they're gonna last even less. And these eco techs are known for burning oil, so just a uh, heads up. Keep an oil eye on your oil level. You might get a, more, a little more life out of these solenoids. Okay, pull these connectors out. This one's right at 10, which is acceptable. Let me check that again. Felt like it was a little loose, but no, we're right at 10. Gotta make sure you push them down on those connectors all the way to make good contact. Don't matter which way you go with the leads. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that intake one down in there. All right, now let's check the exhaust one. Now the intake one was completely dead on the previous video I did. They're both right at 10, so. And notice the other one was at 12, so it was on its way out as well. We'll go ahead and use our new bolts. Why not, right? We got them. We'll build those old ones in the old spare bolt door. Alright. As you tighten them, they should go flush. I pushed them most of the way down in there and put a little, might want to put a little oil around the o-ring too. I probably should have done that but that's a thin o-ring. They go in pretty easy even without looping the o-ring. So we're going to plug these bad boys in and you can't plug them in wrong even if you tried. Notice this is longer because it goes towards the front but even if you tried to stretch that and plug it in it's not going to plug in. Just make sure you hear them click. Pull up on the tabs and make sure they're not going to come out. Get it, obviously everything out of your way here. And my big old pile of junk here. These are good bolts right here, the 6 by one two fives. I know y'all know that if you're a technician. Go ahead and get my test leads out of here. Put all that up later. I got this little nice Tesla connector kit. I have a bunch of them from years of doing this that I've actually made myself, but this is nice and clean. And the Matco guy gave me a really good deal on it, so yeah. Go ahead and put our cover back on. Here, 
reset this code. Make sure it ain't going to come immediately back, which it shouldn't, because we both know y'all saw me do this diagon. You know the solenoids are bad because you saw the resistance values. So let's back out of this. I can already feel a difference in the way it's idling. It was idling rough. It's smooth now. So go back. Let's see, we're going to go back and do the scanner part of this. Let me turn this light off. It might be back feeding off the screen. Alright, we're going to go to my scanner side here. Still have my connector plug in, so it should read. Let's play them codes. All right, let's go ahead and reset that code. Now, sometimes you have to turn the, the engine off with the key on the reset codes, but I think it's GMs you can. I know Dodges you can't, but I'm thinking GMs you can clear everything with it running. Continue. Display codes. Okay, we've got nothing there. So a little trick I'm going to show you, with, especially with these GMs, is turn the car on and off like two or three times. Turn it off. I think it's two times, but we're going to do it three times. I can't remember. Depends on the trip monitors. What I'm getting at is if the code's going to come back, if it sees a problem, usually turning it off and on and starting it up a few times will at least set a pending code if it sees an issue. It usually won't do it on the first start until you drive it for a while. But this tricks the computer into thinking that you're doing different drive or different monitors, trip monitors, meaning more than one start. All right. So that's a good sign. Nothing came back. So, I mean, I know this vehicle's fixed. I mean, y'all saw the resistance, the difference on those new solenoids versus the other ones, and I could already tell how much better it's running. So, I'm gonna keep y'all. Uh, I'm not gonna keep y'all any longer. Sorry, it's hot. It's been a long day. I keep losing my sentence. Anyways, like I said, y'all head over to um, those previous videos I did, and you know, tell your friends, tell them to subscribe, and y'all can, you know, obviously enter to win for these uh, tool giveaways I'm going to be doing in the future. So like I said, for every 100 subscribers I gain, I'm going to be giving away a tool. And if things uh, work out and things get better and I start getting more subscribers and I get this channel monetized, obviously the gifts will be more frequent and better gifts. So y'all help me get there. You already have. I appreciate it. I'm getting close to 300 subscribers. It's been a long journey. But I do appreciate y'all watching my videos and giving me the thumbs up and likes. And I do appreciate your feedback. Don't ever hesitate to feedback whether it's good or bad or not. I can take constructive criticism. I'm human. Well, y'all have a good day. Y'all subscribe. Check like down below. Peace out, YouTube.